My generation, Generation Y, is at a crossroads between living in a digital coma and becoming digitally powered. We are born digital natives. Some of us create social innovations at a young age that have global reach. Many of us, however, get sucked into a digital black hole. Do we have a choice? What makes the difference between living in a digital coma versus becoming digitally powered? Many thought leaders talk about a future where we're using technology to solve today's problems, especially in this generation. However, those of us that work with Gen Y, managers of new hires, teachers, parents, have a lot of concerns. For the last six years, I've developed programs helping Gen Y transition into their careers, and I'm a Gen Y myself. As I look at those that I've worked with, my peers, even my own lifestyle, I have a lot of concerns. Concerns that ultimately end up in a picture like this one. Now, although this article is intended to be a joke, <laughs> the reality is we are becoming addicted to technology. Technology is inherently changing the way we think, the way we learn, and ultimately behave. We are getting so used to multitasking and focusing on bite-sized chunks of information that we are losing the ability to think deeply, analyze, and even experience life. The average 18 to 29-year-old sends and receives 110 text messages a day and spends seven and a half hours in front of a screen every day. 24% of us report having missed out on an important moment in our lives because we were too busy sharing them. Let me repeat that again. 24% of us were so busy posting on Facebook, posting on Twitter, or taking a picture of the moment, or ourselves, that we missed out on the very moment we were trying to capture. Nicholas Carr says it well in his book, The Shallows. Essentially, he says, we are evolving from being cultivators of knowledge to becoming hunters and gatherers of information. So clearly, there's a disconnect here. Thought leaders and visionaries talk about a future where we're building on technology, not getting distracted by it, or becoming victims of information overload. Yet those of us that work day to day with Gen Y, those of us who are living the lives of this generation, see the potential for a completely different future. Do we have a choice? What pushes us from being in a digital coma to becoming digitally powered? As I look at those that I've worked with and those of us who have risen as digital natives, I've observed several key behaviors that I'd like to share with you today. The first is developing a good filter. When I was seven years old, I learned how to type on a Macintosh at school. And I would open up a program, it would fill the entire screen, and for 30 minutes, I would do nothing but type. Today, in contrast, when I want to learn something, I go on YouTube, where I'm bombarded by recommended videos, comments, I have Gmail, Facebook open, I've got other programs, and eventually I have to rewind the video to see what I've missed. And it's usually for a video that's only three or four minutes long. So today, even to learn something, I have to develop a good filter. Recently, I was watching a clip of Jimmy Kimmel, a late-night talk show host in the US, and he was talking about having choreographed the most epic twerking fail ever. And at the end, he quipped, well, it's a good thing there's nothing going on in Syria right now. And that brought it into perspective, because of course, there's been a lot going on in Syria in the past few months. But the fact is, is that there's so much irrelevancy on the internet today, and it is so easy to focus on, it's scary. We have economic crises going on today, environmental crises looming in the future, yet we're spending our day-to-day -day moments talking about epic twerking fails. <laughs> we need to develop a good filter. We need to know the right information at the right time. And we need to take personal responsibility to develop this ability. Because if we don't, if we allow technology to only entertain us, then technology will be nothing more than our glorified babysitters waiting with us until responsibility and our imaginary caretakers come home. And for some of us, they may never come. So we need to develop a good filter to escape our digital comas. Number two, don't deny your child victory. I heard a story once of a child who was in a swim competition. Everyone else had made it to the other side of the pool, and this one child was halfway across, struggling. The mom watching was panicked, anxious, freaking out, and said out loud, I'm going to go talk to the coach and pull him out of the race. A nearby parent overheard her, stopped her, and said, no, let him have his victory. Now, eventually, the child made it to the other side, and although the disappointment was there of not winning. There was self-confidence built of having made it to the end. The child was able to say, I can do this. 
In schools today, especially in the U.S., there's an incredible focus on making every child feel like a winner. We reward kids just for showing up to class. In some cases, we've stopped publishing honor roll because it makes people feel bad. This isn't a good way to raise our future generation, because in the real world, there are real consequences. It is more important to learn how to set goals, to be okay with failing, to be able to recover from failures and persevere towards success. And when we do that, we build real self-confidence, real self-esteem. Even with technology, it's important to be able to step back, set those goals, and then think of how to use technology as a medium to achieve those goals. And when we do that, when we gain those victories, it fuels us in a completely different way that makes us want to do more. It's self-motivating. So don't deny yourself those victories. Experience trumps information. I was recently re-watching a great movie, Good Will Hunting, and there's a moment where Robin Williams says to Matt Damon, so if I asked you about art, you'd probably give me the skinny on every art book that's ever been written. Michelangelo, you'd know a lot about him. But I'll bet you can't tell me what it smells like in the Sistine Chapel. Experience trumps information all the time. When I first started working, I was working closely with the manufacturing plant as an engineer, and my greatest resource was the technicians. The technicians may have been there for 30 years, they may not have had a college degree, but if the line broke down and needed troubleshooting, they were the first people I would call for help. I needed their respect, I needed their cooperation, I needed their experience. What I didn't need was to say that I knew everything just because I had a college degree. What I didn't need was to prove to them that I knew everything just because I could Google it. It was important for me to value their experiences. It was vital. Those of us that rise as digital natives value and respect others' experiences, whether that's of people who are older and, yes, wiser than us, whether that's of our peers, and especially if it's our own experience. Because when you learn something yourself, when you do it yourself and have your hands in the game, you learn a skill that'll serve you for a lifetime. And that skill embeds into your memory, like watching a YouTube video never will. Like doing a Google search never will. Experience trumps information. And lastly, quiet reflection. One of the biggest changes for me in the last few years has been from working in an office to working from home. Something that used to take me eight hours a day to do takes me a total of two hours today. And, you know, of course, I've got less distractions, less coffee breaks, less chit-chat from coworkers. But most importantly, at any given time, I'm able to step back and completely disconnect from phone, from internet, from computers, from people. And I'm able to step back and plan my day, strategize what is the most important thing for me to be working on. I'm also able to be more creative. I've had more impactful ideas now than ever before. I'm able to pick those ideas that'll move the business the furthest. So in order to escape our digital comas, in order to plan, in order to strategize, in order to be creative, it is just as important to disconnect as it is to connect. So if we're able to do these four things, technology can bring us many positives. Technology enables global innovation at young ages. We have more young entrepreneurs today than ever before. Technology enables us to gain a working knowledge of almost any topic so we can talk intelligently with experts. Technology enables real-time connection. One of my favorite online learning websites, Coursera, consistently has over 18,000 people joining a course worldwide. And lastly, most importantly, technology enables us to build bridges across seemingly unrelated topics. Whereas in the past, we had to amass a lot of information, become experts in a silo, technology helps us by storing that information so we can look at how can we connect the dots. So if we make this a conscious choice to escape our digital comas, there's a lot we can do. And to give you an example, I'd like to talk about the DJI Phantom versus the Kumba Cam kit. The DJI Phantom is a remote-controlled quadcopter that was in initially made for hobbyists, people who want to have fun, people who want to spend a lot of hours learning how to fly a helicopter, have this become one of their main hobbies. Now, two Gen Y entrepreneurs stepped back and asked, how can we do more with this? How can we make this easy to use for anyone? How can we make this multi-purpose, whether it's for events, for personal use, for business use? And so they stepped back and they set some goals. They looked at what was the consumer need, what, and they looked at really taking the time to learn from their experience, from others' experiences. And ultimately, they were able to integrate multiple different devices from different industries into an easy-to-use kit that they call the Kumba Cam. So I've even used the Kumba Cam to show my mom my house when I first moved to Florida. That's how easy it is. 
And I want to share with you guys a brief video um, kind of showing you the abilities of the Kumba Cam and the variety of situations it can be used in. And what I want you to keep in mind is everything you see was filmed using the Kumba Cam itself, a camera that's actually mounted on this remote controlled helicopter. <laughs> So that was pretty brief, but I will say the creators of Kumba Cam are here today if anyone wants to learn more about it. The Kumba Cam is just one story out of many where Gen Y entrepreneurs were able to look at technology and do something more with it. The creators of Kumba Cam were able to escape their digital comas, and I'm confident that all of you can too. So whether you're older than me or younger than me, help each other snap out of these digital comas. The next time you're in front of a screen, whether that's your phone, whether you're watching a movie on Netflix, whether you're watching that series finale, think about how can I challenge myself to do more? How can I snap out of this digital coma? And when we make escaping digital comas a conscious choice, I'm looking forward to looking at all of the great things I know my generation will accomplish. Thank you.